Good afternoon. I'm Israeli government spokesman Avi Hyman. Today is day 234 of the October 7th war. And our war aims remain the same. Destroy Hamas, free the 125 hostages, and ensure Gaza does not pose a threat to Israel. We'll begin with an update on IDF casualties. Since the outset of the October 7th massacre, IDF fatalities have unfortunately risen to 636. Staff Sergeant Betzalel Tzvi Kovach was 20 years old from Jerusalem. He died of his wounds after a battle in the northern Gaza Strip. Staff Sergeant Sahar Sudai was 20 years old from Tel Aviv and also fell in battle in northern Gaza. May their memories be a blessing. Our hearts go out to all the families of those soldiers killed in action, as well as those who were murdered, taken hostage and wounded. Yesterday, Hamas terrorists fired eight rockets from Rafah towards central Israel, towards central Israeli cities. Had the Iron Dome not intercepted them, they could have caused mass casualties. The rockets were fired 800 meters away from IDF troops operating in the area. As the IDF troops approached, Hamas fired from, from within their civilian population, between a mosque and a school. We struck and destroyed the launcher shortly after the launch. This is Hamas's method of carrying out terrorist activities under the cover of their own civilian population against the civilians of the State of Israel. A double war crime. Last night, the IDF targeted two Hamas commanders in Rafah, whose hands were drenched in Israeli blood. Yassin Rabia, the Hamas chief of staff in Judea and Samaria, he transferred funds to terror targets and planned Hamas terror attacks throughout Judea and Samaria. Rabin carried out numerous murderous terror attacks himself, including in the years 2001 and 2002, in which IDF soldiers were killed. Khalid Nagar was a senior official in Hamas's Judea and Samaria wing. He directed shooting attacks and transferred funds intended for Hamas terrorist activities in the Gaza Strip. He himself carried out several deadly terror attacks between the years of 2001 and 2003 including the murder of Shuki Harmelech, the husband of Israeli member of Knesset Limor's son, Harmelech. Limor was heavily pregnant at the time that Nagar and his group fired at their family car indiscriminately. Shuki, her husband, jumped on top of her and the baby to save them. He was tragically killed. Now, back to uh, the events of last night. According to initial reports, these are initial reports, a fire broke out after the attack, which, ap which appears to have taken civilian lives. Civilian casualties are desperately sad, but this is the war Hamas wanted and started. In the north this morning, the uh, Israeli Air Force aircraft struck and eliminated Hezbollah terrorists in southern Lebanon from where rockets were fired towards northern Israel earlier this morning. In addition, the IAF fighter jet struck Hezbollah military structure also in southern Lebanon. Now an update from Kogat, which coordinates the entry of aid to Gaza. Yesterday, 360 trucks went into Gaza, including 124 aid trucks that arrived to Kerem Shalom from Egypt. 37 pallets airdropped over Gaza. Six tankers of fuel entered Gaza. Last week, 1,981 trucks entered Gaza. Excluding UNRWA, the UN agency sent in 284 trucks. As Kogat confirms, only seven were from UNRWA. We're at a loss to understand that everybody else seems to be able to send supplies to Gaza. We ask the simple question, maybe the problem is with UNRWA? That's the end of our briefing for today. I'll ask that you uh, put your questions and uh, your outlet in the chat box, please. Thank you. Three questions from Dan Williams at Reuters. 
Uh, what is Israel's explanation for the mass casualty event at Rafa? Did you, the IDF use 2,000 pound bombs uh, of the kind the US warned it might, be, might stop supplying? And has Israel briefed the United States on this incident? Dan, I can say what I just said, uh, which is um, paraphrasing the words of the IDF. I, if you want more information, I'd ask you to check with the IDF spokesman's unit. Um, it is still under investigation. Uh, the target of those uh, of that attack, it was a, a attack um, was against those two uh, Hamas henchmen. Um, I'd ask you to ask the IDF for any uh, additional information. Thank you. Uh, further question from Dan Williams. Did Egyptian troops shoot at or exchange fire with the IDF in the Rafah area? So again, that is, uh, I've seen those reports, uh, but that would come under ongoing um, operational activity potentially. Um, and it's definitely a question for the IDF. I, I have no comment currently. Thank you. Question from Joel Pollock at Breitbart News. Given that Hamas uses civilians as human shields, is it reasonable to expect that more civilians may be killed as Israel gets closer to the Hamas leadership in Rafah? Thanks for the question, Joel. Uh, Hamas does its utmost to ensure civilian casualties on both sides. Uh, if they're not purposely shooting at Israelis or uh, doing what we saw on October 7th, which is what they wish to do in the future, plowing through our borders, raping, killing entire families alive, um, then they are fighting from within their own civilian population. Fighting from with, shooting at Israel, at Israeli civilians from deep within their own civilian population is a double war crime. It's what Hamas um, has become famous for. Uh, we will do our utmost to go after Hamas. Our fight is with Hamas, not the people of Gaza. We'll do our utmost to go after Hamas and avoid civilian casualties. To date, we've moved over a million, uh, around a million um, Gazans out of harm's way from Rafa elsewhere to the north, uh, to, to north of Rafa. Um, and we will continue to go after Hamas while avoiding civilian casualties. Thank you. Question from Jim Williams at Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. The U.S. State Department reported that CIA Director Burns would be returning uh, to the region this week to try to restart hostage release talks. Are you aware of any formal talks starting up again this week? So as we've said from day one of this war, we will do our absolute utmost to bring home all of the hostages, every last hostage. Now, for that to be achieved, we will need to keep military pressure up on Hamas, which we are doing in Rafah and elsewhere. We will need to continue to go after Hamas while using all of the diplomatic channels um, available to us. We've learned from the, uh, the last um, major release of hostages, where we got over half of the hostages back, that uh, if we don't keep up the military pressure, um, Hamas feels that they don't have what to lose, then it's a lot harder on the diplomatic channels. So we will continue to use all diplomatic channels. We will not be um, negotiating in the media. We will be negotiating behind closed doors, and we hope to see all of the hostages released to their families very soon. I'll reiterate our message to Hamas, which is that this war could end today if they um, unconditionally, um, unconditionally, uh, surrendered to Israel and uh, released all of the hostages. Thank you. Question from Hannah Julian at the Jewish Press. Uh, War Cabinet Minister Gadi Eisenkot said today that Hamas is regaining strength and that the fighting will continue for years. Is that the assessment of the government and the Prime Minister's office? I think the Prime Minister on multiple occasions has made it clear that we have to go after the Hamas battalions, uh, the last four of which are in Rafa, we need to smash those battalions so that they are no longer able to, uh, to, to, to be active as a, as, a, as a military, as a terror army. Um, we will continue to do that. Uh, after which, we'll have to do what the Prime Minister has described as mopping up, meaning going back and uh, taking care of uh, small pockets of Hamas terrorists. Um, 
I'm not going to comment directly to, to those reports um, from Minister Eisenkot. You can obviously ask him uh, what he meant by that. It's unclear to me. Thank you. Question from uh, Fred Eger from Interplanetary Te Television. Uh, Israel's chief military advocate, Yifat Tomer Yerushalmi, condemns a very grave IDF strike on Rafa, claiming it killed uh, dozens of civilians and is conducting an investigation to the fullest extent. Uh, in uh, open inverted uh, commas, uh, the IDF regrets any harm to non-combatants during the war. Uh, End, end quote. Do you have any updates on the investigation of this strike? So I think we've already spoken about this. Uh, we went after two um, Hamas um, commanders responsible for many, many attacks in Judea and Samaria and Gaza, but predominantly Judea and Samaria. Um, shooting attacks like the one that I, uh, I, I, I spoke about, but sadly, in recent weeks, in recent years, we've seen many, many of these shooting attacks across Judea and Samaria. They were drenched in Israeli blood, these two individuals. Um, according to initial reports, a fire broke out um, after the attack. Um, these terrorists were hiding underground, um, and uh, it would appear that there were civilian casualties. We're, we're looking into this. I will say, um, that it was definitely grave. Any any loss of life, civilian life, is grave, uh, and is uh, is awful. Um, we seek to go after Hamas and limit civilian casualties, and uh, we will investigate if an investigation uh, is needed. This is a unfolding story. Thank you. That was the last question. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow at three thirty. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dejobnik signing off.